an A, and there it is, doing its thing. It's a flexible linker. It does whatever it likes. Um, so NMR, great technique, has its limitations, like all good techniques. Uh, you, okay, if you want to look at structures, so you need protons, then you need pure compounds. If you want to look at phosphorus and you've only got one compound with phosphorus in it, then you don't really care, right? Um, you need high concentrations. You can get away with a couple of hundred micromolar. The higher you've got, the better. But the samples, now the samples are 0 0.6 mils. You would think life would get better. But um, 0.6 mil samples. So you need the same sort of concentrations as you need for x-ray, but you need a heck of a lot more of it. On the other hand, you don't need crystals. So by the time you've wasted all your crystal trials, you could have done an NMR experiment. But NMR is very, very slow. Um, if you want to determine spectra, if you want to determine structures, Ideally, I, very few people do proton anymore, only anymore. You can, you can get, you can go to maybe a hundred, hundred odd amino acids for protons. Um, but really nowadays, everyone does carbon nitrogen labeling. Um, and I would say for carbon nitrogen labeling, you can probably get to 20, 30 kilodaltons. But then, if you want to go bigger than that, you have to deuterium label. Um, and then you can, might be able to get to 50 kilodaltons. But um, it depends on the protein. So our pro we have a big protein with long linkers. What really kills you is the relaxation. If it's very big, it relaxes fast. You don't get the signal. By the time you want to get the signal, it's decayed. You can't see anything. Um, if you deuterate... You've got rid of a lot of your protons, so you don't have quite the relaxation problems. That's why you deuterate. Partly it gets rid of overlap, partly it gets, it's really the relaxation that kills you. Um, and many experiments, to see the NH as you go to low pH, that's not so common anymore. Um, if you want to ask specific questions, so... I want to know about a specific histidine or a specific alanine. I can specifically label that. Yes, I can put in N15 labeled alanine, and then all I'll see is my, N my alanines. I won't see the rest of my protein. So there is only the... So I can answer specific questions, but maybe not do structures. I can do ligand binding, but maybe not do structures. So what's NMR good for? You see all the protons. You can use it qualitatively. Um, you don't need to worry about what you're trying to look for. The really good thing about NMR is dynamics and changes. And you don't need crystals. Um, and you can use, measure things in different solution conditions. So if you want to see what happens with pH, you can do it. If you want to see what happens when you add calcium, you can do it. You can't always with crystallography. So what are we doing? Lots of things. Much work is going on to how to get the structures faster, how to get more information faster. Lots of exciting work about um, minor populations of complexes, dynamic data. Lots of work now on intrinsic disorder, and this is an area that is really um, increasing. So NMR of solids is, is, used to be very difficult, is now more or less where we were 10 years ago or so. It's getting for easier or more normal. Right, that's more enough. Um, that's really enough. If you want to have a look at questions nine, and 10, you can. Um, 